Good morning, Mount Olivet family. Glad you could join me here for the first Sunday of June. It is Trinity Sunday as we celebrate the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The God in three persons. The shamrock, if you will. The three leaves making up one item. Our Old Testament passage today is Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 10, as we look at the creation of the world. Our prayer psalm today is Psalm 8. And our New Testament passage today is Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, as we find out our calling. Or more importantly, we look at the phrase, go, the main idea of the Great Commission. Before we begin all that, let us begin with a word of prayer. Eternal God, we thank you and we praise you that we gather here to celebrate the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us this day focus on you, our Savior, and the Spirit of promise. Prepare us now for a time together. We ask all this in your most holy name. Amen. So Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. And let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that he gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. This is God's word for God's people. Let us give thanks. Our prayer psalm today is Psalm 8. It is titled, How Majestic Is Your Name? And it is to the chorus master, or excuse me, choir master, according to the Griffith, or excuse me, the Giddith. And it is a psalm of David. Now, at any time, please feel free to pause, take time, and seek God in prayer. And if you have any prayer requests or concerns or joys or praises you'd love to share, please share them with us at Mount Olivet. We would love to pray with you, and we would love to celebrate with you. You can send them either via email to myself or Karen, the office manager. You can call, and if neither of us are there, leave a message. Or you can leave them as a comment, whether you're here on Facebook or YouTube. We would love to pray with you, and we would love to rejoice with you. Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established the strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Again, please feel free to pause, take time, and seek God in prayer. Our New Testament passage today comes from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, as we look at the Great Commission and how we're told to go. Now, the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. 
And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us give thanks. So as we see in the passage, Matthew is writing about the Great Commission. And there's only one key word out of all of this that we need to focus on. And that's the word go. It's not that they went to the mountain and worshipped him. They followed his directions. They went. The past tense of go. The disciples listened when Christ told them exactly where to go, what to do. Because he begins by saying, now the 11 disciples, remember Judas was no longer part of them at this time, Judas Iscariot. They went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. He told them to go, they went. So the key in this passage is that two-letter word, go. It's a verb meaning go. So when he tells them, go to the mountain, they go. The next time he tells them this, he talks about what they're supposed to do after he's gone. He says, go and make disciples. And then he gives instructions on how to do it. He says, make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But where he tells them to go is key. He says, all nations. Open game, free range. No limits, no borders. He says, go. Many churches, many schools, many seminaries will use this passage as their commencement speech for graduating classes. And it's fitting this time of year because we've had Seaford's graduation, we've had Laurel, we've had Woodbridge, we've had Tech. Those kids are going on to something new. We've had the high schools and colleges graduate now. They're all going on to something new. When Christ tells us as believers, go. He's giving us a directive. He says, go and do this. Not just go, so like we go, now what? No, he tells us to go and do this. So in our personal walk with him, what is he telling us to do? Well, it's simple. Again, he's telling us to go. We're called to ministry. Every single one of us is called to a type of ministry. Now, we're not all called to the same. Because if you were to look at the prayer shawl ministry, I guarantee you, if I sit down with those people in the prayer shawl ministry, I cannot crochet or knit to save my life. The only thing I've ever been able to do is take that little crochet hook and some yarn and make that long, I don't know, I don't even know what it's called. I turned yarn into knotted yarn. That's all I ever did. But those people are called to that ministry. The people who meet on Tuesdays are called to the ministry of making sandwiches for Mount Olive. They go, they make them, then they go and take them. Our VBS, our father-daughter dance, the tailgate that we're hoping to bring back this year, and some new ideas that are coming out, all are about what happens outside of the building that's called the church. Because there's two forms of the church. There's the building, there's the people. The building is where we meet. The people are the ones who go. So in this passage, Christ tells us, go therefore and make disciples. Now, the reason this is brought up on Trinity Sunday is because it has the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're doing this in their name, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. As it says in that hymn, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. But what are we supposed to do when we go? Well, that happens in verse 20. He says, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. The ideas of the Sabbath, days of rest. The ideas of loving your neighbor as yourself, caring for one another. The ideas of lifting up the poor and the needy. And treating others with human decency teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. Now, when we go and we feel afraid, what should we remember? It's that last part. He says, I am with you always to the end of the age. 
We're not doing this alone. Just look around the church. We're not doing this alone. We've got volunteers for VBS. We've got volunteers for the father-daughter dance. Nobody works alone. Sometimes it might feel like it. And sometimes when we sit here and work by ourselves, it might feel like we're alone. But he says, I am with you always. So on this Trinity Sunday, we just have to do one simple thing. Go. When he gives us the command, we go. The disciples were commanded to the mountain. They went. We are commanded to go and serve. Let us go and serve. Pray with me. Eternal God, we thank you and we praise you. We lift you up today. That as we go, you are with us. So prepare us now for where you have called us to go. Strengthen and encourage us each day. We ask all this in your most holy name. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope wherever you are, you are safe, you are healthy, and that God has blessed you in some way today. Take care.